Hello guys, nice to see you again. 3D pictures on Facebook are very popular at the moment, but how can you do it in Lumina 3? I will show you how it works after the intro. Such 3D pictures, which seem to be photographed in three dimensions, are easy to create with Lumina 3. If you want to upload a 3D looking picture, you need beside the actual image an image file that contains a depth map. That's an image which marks off the objects of the picture you want to move. That works pretty simple by only one object, but it also works for multiple objects with different distances, so they move with different speed. The image I'm using in this video to demonstrate how you can create a 3D picture is downloadable for free on Pixabay, so you can try it with me or by yourself. You can find the link in the video description. Now let's jump to Lumina, so we can start with our picture. At the end of this video I'll show you how it works on Facebook. So, here you can see the picture in which we want to achieve this 3D effect. We deliberately chose such a picture because we have objects here which are staggered differently deep in the room. With this picture we will demonstrate what it is about. Of course the whole thing also works with an object in the foreground and it's also faster and easier to implement, but I think the way the balloons work simply becomes clearer in this picture. So what you have to know basically is, the further the object should be in the foreground, the brighter it should be. That means we will mask the single objects immediately and fill the foremost balloons on this map of depth almost white and then the further the balloons fly in the background the grayer or darker they become. That means the foreground in the picture is white and the absolute background is black. And depending on how dark my objects are in the picture the stronger they move. Bright objects move stronger because they are more in the foreground and darker objects move less because they are further in the background. So I would say let's just get started. So first I need a new adjustment layer. I call it up. Then I zoom in on this balloon here and start masking directly with the brush. I also put on my mask. Very important now is that you need a very sharp outline. That means please leave the softness of your tools at maximum of 10% or even only 5%. And then you can start right away. You should take a little time for that now. It's also important to know that it's better to paint over rather than leave an edge, in this case that of the balloon. right mouse click, then I can choose the view even bigger to paint everything inside here. Zack, 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 that's it. Now I have my first balloon ready here. Now I make the tool sides much smaller to be able to paint the scondola down here as well. That's it. And this snippet down here as well. And then we already finished the first balloon. So, and what we need now is the filter curves, which you can find at the professional filters. There it is. The balloon, which flies now very far in the background, it must become very bright. I make it almost wide by placing my curve here horizontally in this coordinate system. The higher this horizontal line is now, the brighter the object is. The further I move the line downwards, the darker the object becomes. I want to leave this balloon relatively bright. It's already finished. Now I call up the next adjustment layer and enlarge the second balloon again and I do the same. 
I call up my masking brush. The soft edge stays that way. You can also see here, that's a relatively quick way to do the whole thing. Right mouse button again. Sides is much smaller. And then I choose this gondola as well down here. So yes, then I'm already done with the second object. I can turn off the masking again. I fade in the picture again. Here we need the filter curves. And this is supposed to be a middle layer. That's why I set it to a middle gray. You see that. Now I mask this balloon out here. The last one I leave out. Then we have four layers in the picture. One background layer and three flying balloons. That should be enough for now. So guess what? For that I need a new adjustment layer again. Also here I enlarge the balloon a little bit. And also here I do the masking brush again. Which I leave directly like this. Also I start to paint the balloon here. My tool is a little bit big, so I have to be very careful, like this. But I'm going to do this a little bit smaller now, in order to paint the picture down here too. If you want to see it even bigger now, then you can move the picture with Command or Control Plus, and then with the spacebar. This has been asked for many times before, how can I actually move the picture if I have such a large view? How can I still move it? With the spacebar, then you get a hand and then you can easily move this here. So now I continue to mask this balloon out. So I'm done with it too, good. Masking again, turned off and then I look at the whole picture again. And here again, I need my curves filter. The balloon is now already quite far in the background. That means I make it almost black. Now you should see clear differences in gray tones that would be important. The only thing that is missing for me now is my background layer and also here I call up a new adjustment layer again. I also call up the filter curves again. I would like to have this background layer completely black. That must be of course all the way down then. Under my lowest adjustment layer. Now I click on the top one again and then my map picture is already finished. Exactly this picture is needed by Facebook to be able to evaluate the objects in the picture differently in depth and then move them differently. So now comes another very important point. I have to save this picture now because I have to upload it to Facebook with the original photo. This means I go to export as image. The name of the image must be identical. Now I put one underlined behind the file named and then I write depth. So, and then Facebook knows, aha, uh -huh, this is the depth image to my actual photo. I save the whole thing and then we can walk out to Lumina 3. Then I just open Facebook in Safari. I go here on the button photo slash video and choose both of my pictures. Facebook does everything automatically. This recognizes immediately everything by itself. Well, if your files are large, you probably need to wait a bit. If everything went right, Facebook should show you the 3D picture. And that's it. So, when I move my mouse now, you can see the objects moving in the picture. The first object is very strong, the last one very little, which creates this spatial and very perspectival impression. So you see it's not that difficult at all and you can realize that in Lumina 3 very well. If I don't move the mouse for a while, the photo starts to move on its own. So all people on Facebook who look at your post can see that too. I want to mention it again, the link to this picture can be found below in the video description. I hope we could help you with this video. If so, we would be happy if you give us a like and subscribe to our channel. We put very much work into this and there will be a lot more videos in the future.
So thank you and see you soon.